Welcome to my channel, Comic Book Noise, where we talk about my company, Digital Noise. But today we're going to talk about this under the segment called Comic Book Issues and the subject under Comic Book Issues. We're going to talk about the toxic comic book cancel culture and also the Whisper Network, which I call the Comic Book Karen. Why I wanted to talk about that subject today is because there's a lot going on within the comic book industry as long as well as with society with all of what's going on today as we know with the protests, with uh, targeting issues about racism and uh, you know women's rights and all of the above. Um, I just wanted to talk about uh, specifically within the comic book industry and entertainment industry that deals with comic books or gaming or whatever. Um, the cancel culture. Um, and it has been an issue, I think, for a while. And this, uh, the, it, it has been a strong movement of going forward and and just within the comic book industry as we talked about before that as i discussed before in the early video uh where i talked about comics gate and um which is uh, what i found out which was birthed from gamergate um about this toxic almost cancel culture within the industry and how it's it impeded its way into the creative arts and the creative industry. About the cancel culture, it's becoming too much of an extreme uh, that I'm seeing and what I'm witnessing and uh, a taste of what I've experienced with the what I call the comic book culture, uh, the cancel culture, I would say. I, would, I just wanted to talk about those issues because it's something that I see that's a real problem. It's destroying uh, careers, it's destroying lives, it's destroying uh, livelihoods, uh, it's destroying creativity. Um, I think it's, uh, it's coming to a point where this toxic cancel culture is becoming almost like a fascist movement. And um, it's actually killing creativity. It's actually killing individualism. It's, it's killing people to be human, basically. Like, as humans are imperfect, humans make mistakes. I, I can see where it becomes legit, where you have a cancel culture uh, or you cancel certain things. First, it became like when the beginning you canceled, it was it started on uh, diff on social media. That's when this toxic cancel culture started. And it, I don't think it started in a insidious way. I think it just started naturally when a group of people found something offensive and they say, you know what, let's basically protest or, or, or not support this person because of maybe they uh, committed child abuse or maybe they murdered somebody or maybe um, they were overtly racist or things like that. Definitely doesn't have any good intent at all uh, and basically on the border of you know something that's heinous but now i see where this toxic cancel culture is becoming almost a fascist group um and from what i'm understanding like for example like now it's almost minute and almost on a ridiculous level things are getting canceled these days. And and this, and I want to kind of focus on the gaming and comic book world of things. Juan Carlo Esposito, 
he's was hired to do the voice and be the model of the role of Antonio Castillo in the game Far Cry. And there they want to cancel, uh, I forget the name of the company that creates this game, but they want to cancel the game itself and the company basically because uh, Juan Carlo isn't a real Latino uh, because they said he's not a Latino person and the character and the protagonist of the game is a Latino character and a very prominent character and uh, because Juan Carlos is I think he's French and black or French and Cuban or something that no, was French and black and uh, but he's an actor and he's a great actor and he's a good actor so it's it's kind of puzzling why uh, people are trying to cancel an actor that's trying to play a role like I heard um, Halle Berry uh, was basically bullied out of a role where she wanted to be casted in the role of playing a, a transgendered woman that was once a man. And because she's not a real transgendered actor or actress, that there was almost like a whisper network of her not playing the role. And another one, Sebastian Stan is being canceled because not of anything he had done. It's something that his girlfriend had done that was so bad was that she took a picture and in the Asian outfit, I think it was like a traditional Asian outfit or sort of like a modern Asian outfit and another girl was with her and then I guess they were at an Asian party or something like that. And this was like a couple of years ago. And she said on her, I think it was on Twitter where it says Asian night. So they want to, they, the Whisper Network wanted to talk about that and got on Sebastian Stan telling him that he should do this and that. And so he just wanted to block it because it was basically nonsense, which it is. And they wanted to cancel him because he didn't want to address that because it was so silly. Like, so now you can't wear Asian outfits or clothing. It's just a weird, uh, extreme way that this cancel culture is going. And I find it very insane, <laughs> to say the least of where it's going, because it's so extreme in these days. And it actually, it's actually affecting people's lives, which is insanity. And these whisper networks are having an agenda to do that over little minute things. Like everyone's offended by everything now. Like you can't, I'm, okay, I did a video about SJWs. I consider myself an SJW. So me coming into back into the comic book world and just wanted to reboot my comic book company and, and move it forward to a different way um, because I was out of it for a while because I wanted to concentrate on other things, which, you know, I'll talk, you'll probably discover it soon or, or what or the other things that I'm doing. But now, I mean, when I got back into getting into comics and creating, and you know, sort of rebooting my comic book company, um, I've 
just seen and experienced things that I had no idea what was going on. I, I had no idea that I didn't know such a thing of uh, comic skate was happening. I had no idea that SJW was a bad term. And I did a video of that basically about three weeks ago. And all I titled, because I consider myself an SJW, um, was that when SJWs go wrong, not saying that SJW was wrong, I said, when it goes wrong, it can go very wrong. And um, what I discussed was that I had an earlier incident about two, two three, when, no, I think it was nine, 2016 when this happened, of where I posted a picture of mine and then uh, that I drew of one of the characters of one of my titles. And this uh, young lady who had her own title criticized the way I drew a woman's body. And well, let me just show you the clip. Let's go back into memory right now. About two, three years ago, I was in Facebook and I was just posting my pictures in one of the groups and saying, okay, this is the lead. And it was uh, a beautiful illustration that someone colored and I illustrated it. And, um, you know, in comic books, you know, a lot of artists exaggerate bodies and things like that. So I was going through that style and a little bit and stuff like that. And so I had a woman who was Caucasian who created a comic book that was about a black superheroine. Um, she said, hey, nice drawing, nice drawing colors, but a woman's body's not like that. And I was like, okay, cool, that's cool, but it's just my style of drawing and, uh, and that's, you know, may not be for you, you know, but that's the style of drawing. So, you know, so that's how I draw this character's body. And so she was like, oh my God, no. Oh, not this again. And I was like, what is going on? And so she went on to say, well, a woman's body is not like that. And I was like, well, okay, that's cool. You don't like her body. That's fine. That's just my style of drawing. And that's basically it, you know, because everybody has their own art style and the way they draw things. And so she kept picking at this picture. And I'm like, what is her issue? If, you know, there's different artists that draws exaggerated bodies. And I told her, like, that are, that draw way more exaggerated bodies than I do of, of a female um, character. And um, I draw sexy characters, whether it be male or female. So it wasn't a sexist thing because I draw just same bodies for men being sexual as they did in a they have sex, you know, exaggerated bodies and built and stuff like that, just as I do women. But I guess she would call her a feminist or whatever. And she kept harping on my drawing. And I said, well, hey, why don't you look to Troy for that stuff? Why don't you pick at um, Joe Matarira? or somebody that draws exaggerated bodies way more than I do. She said, no, we're not talking about them. We're talking about you. And I'm like, what is your issue? And then everybody started getting well me about my I said, well, hey, if it's not your style of drawing, it's cool. It's not. It's, it's for fans that like my drawing. It's maybe not for you how I draw this particular female, but I have an audience that likes the way I draw this particular female. And so I say, if it's not for you, not everything's for everybody. And everybody was saying, well, maybe they could sell more and this and this and that. And, and I just said, you know, I had no other person complain about my artwork. I've been on PR, I've been on 
basically television and also I've been on radio stations and I've been in the newspapers about my character Delete. No one has a problem with the way I draw my character and it, and all of a sudden I'm being attack, attacked by this woman and not to be racist, but she was a Caucasian woman that drew a black, uh, that created a black character that was female of her own. And I felt I had no black female complaining about the way I draw my characters. And I just kind of, kind of felt offended. It was like a Karen moment. That's what it felt like. It felt like a Karen moment. <laughs> Before Karen and all these other names were invented. This was like in, I guess you could say this happened in 2016, I guess, when all of this comics gate and social justice warrior was happening and I didn't know what was going on. And it was very weird. It was very weird. And I had, it was just a very weird time. And then other black guys on the thing were like saying, you know, you should not do this. It was black guys defending her about her critiquing my comic book character. So it was just, and not that it has to do with any color, but it just found it very ironic that I'm being ostracized for me just putting up my work and doing my thing. I'm not bothering, again, this is just like the comic skate situation. I'm not bothering anybody, I'm doing my thing. I'm just posting my artwork and this Caucasian woman is attacking me, but in a social justice, not in a racist way, but in a social justice warrior feminist way. And I'm like, hey, this is just like my style. This is my character. This, this is not for everybody. It's cool. It, it just had to be one, two conversation. It didn't have to be this long, drawn out situation. Okay, so you saw that. I mean, I think it's kind of self-explanatory. What I was trying to say was that this was a situation of where one person had an opinion of where I drew a woman's body and I explained myself and explained why I drew the body and that should have been it. But this, uh, as I said before, this woman, as you see, you see before, like it's self-explanatory, like, okay, you have an issue with my thing. This is why I drew it. That's it. Keep going at me. It's not going to make me change the way I want to draw something or how I want to draw a figure or whatever, because that's my style and that's the way I want to express myself. You can't dictate what my artistic view is. That's what people don't get to understand. This is my artistic view. So I posted this video and I had so much, I had a lot of support, but I also had so much backlash, which people didn't understand. I had people in uh, certain groups that I posted the video in, in Facebook and, uh, you know, different social medias, telling me that somehow, you know, I should listen to her. I say I did listen to her, but that still does not dictate how I draw and what I should do. Yes, I, I, it's my decision what I want to do with that information she gave me. She should not try to bully her information on me and she should not try to bully me into changing my artwork or she should not try to bully me into have a different perspective. She can explain her perspective and if I, I, and it's my right to take that perspective or not, it's my creative outlet and I can express it any way I want to. I can draw anybody's body the way I want to, whether it be male, female, cat, dog, or whatever. It's my artistic, artistic expression to draw a character the way I like. And I already have an audience for what I've done with this character already. So this should not be a college electoral course in, in uh, trying to explain this. It should be self-explanatory. We're in America. Art is not a dictatorship of what you want to view on somebody else's art expression. Art is about 
the individual expressing themselves through their artwork. You may not like that artwork, that's fine. So you move on, you go to another one. That's what I tried to explain. But a lot of people were hell-bent because it was a woman, that one woman, that was offended by my artwork or oh, didn't like my artwork. And for me, I didn't have, I guess because I'm a man, I did not have a right to express the way I want to express my artwork drawing a female figure. But nobody's gonna do that and nobody's gonna change my mind and nobody should do that to any artist or anyone that wants to express themselves through their artwork. So I don't care if, you know, if you see the, and I told them, like the people that were complaining about the video, cause I called her a Karen in the episode because that's what she was acting as. She was acting as a Karen steadily coming at me at my artwork when it should have been a one-two conversation. And she should understand this is my expression of artwork. You may not like it. This is not for you. Move on. Whatever I don't like, I never tell an artist how to express themselves. Never. And another artist or creative person or just anybody should never tell an artist how they should express themselves. So no matter what, you know, but if it's, you know, it wasn't even offensive. And this is the art, you know, you see the artwork that I draw a woman. And one of the people that had a comic book company or comic book publication had the nerve to tell me like, who even didn't see my artwork or didn't know of my artwork, tell me I should listen to her. I was like, but first you don't even know if you don't like my artwork, you move on, that's it. You can't tell me what to express with my artwork. So this is the example that was kind of, I had a taste of that example of this kind of toxic whisper networky thing, because if, a person doesn't agree with what you're doing, you know, that's, that may be an individual thing and you're not hurting anybody or whatever, starts to create this pact and these underground bully teams to try to force you or shaming you into expressing yourself a different way. With me, that's not going to work because it's not going to happen. People can talk to me to on blue or whatever or try to bully me to whatever. It's not going to change what I express, how I express my artwork. It's not going to change my artwork style. I, the way I see artwork, it comes from the person. And if other people like it, then so be it. I do not do artwork to please masses of people. I do artwork that because I want to express myself through how I see the world. So That'll be in comic books, that'll be in anything I do, art-wise, expressive-wise, you know. This is not a dictatorship, or there shouldn't be a dictatorship in the world of creativity. Now, if you're going into something extreme like child pornography and all that stuff, that's a whole different matter. We're not talking about that. That is something I don't even touch or do. But as far as this cancel culture that's coming in the comic book world or in the graphic novel world is is becoming too extreme and almost like a fascist type of thing because now you're bullying people and destroying people's lives with this behavior or with, with this movement and you're becoming because i i what i saw was toxic when I, I when I discovered about um, uh, Comicsgate, was that they were bullying. It, it, you can express your opinion how you feel, but now it became a bullying tactic uh, when they were starting to criticize Marvel. I mean, in and and attacking individuals that worked in Marvel. 
in in many ways of how gamer not gamer gate but comic skate started um with this movement and it it became almost a hate campaign against marvel which i don't agree with you as an individual can have your opinion but when you create a movement because you don't like a way a creative outlet is wants to express himself which was marvel during the time and they wanted to show diversity and differences and or whatever and marvel has every right to their creative outlet um gamer gate should not i'm not gonna get comics gate started a movement of bullying and harassing people on online and and it's just wrong that was just wrong it uh, comic skate should have just expressed themselves or people that started the comic skate thing should have just kind of expressed themselves individually about how they don't like the book bullying tactics are just insane should not be in that way um, and just create their own comic book without putting a hate campaign on Marvel and the people that work within it because they want to uh, put a new direction with their books. But now the opposite is happening on the other side. I don't know whether to call it the SJWs or who started, but it's a whispered network and it's a, it is creating a toxic comic book cancel culture which is they're just as bad as from what i understand the original um comic skate they're bullying the other way for people to for them to express themselves um as i explained before i just had an example of it what i just talked to you before but now it's going to way extremes like everybody changes everybody grows everybody turns different everybody you you should not get tweets from 10 years ago when somebody was 12 and then have them fired like 12 years later uh, that that they just got a job now when they're a grown adult and you cancel them because they said one or two words everyone in the world basically has said something off colored and something weird and something uh, that's not in, shown in a great light. I think this cancel culture is becoming insane. Uh, it's becoming almost anarchist. It's, uh, it destroys things rather than build it up and it kills creativity. I mean, especially within the comic book industry, because now even, I think, is it in Japan or Tokyo, where Amazon is, is halting all their books or not distributing a lot of manga books, I think it is, because the faces of the animes look too young. Even though they might be older characters, their faces look too young to American eyes. So now they won't carry any of the manga books because they're, or the Japanese drawn books because a lot of the characters look young. They've been distributing these books since, I don't know when, uh, <laughs> you know, since comic books basically, uh, became a big thing, especially in the uh, 80s and 90s and stuff like that. So nobody had a problem with it then. You know, you have uh, Japanime and all this other stuff. Uh, but now there's a big problem with that because a lot of the um, uh, Americans or the Whisper Networkers are complaining about those characters. So it's... It's becoming a monstrous thing that's halting a lot of growth and uh, a lot of expression. And it's a bullying com uh, 
a bullying tactic. And you're becoming bullies. You're becoming these same groups are becoming the, the things that they hate. And what they claim that they hate is people that are dictatorships, the people, people who are dictators, uh, people who uh, bully other people, uh, people who have narrow minds and don't want to see anything other than outside their perspective. Congratulations, you've just become the thing that you hate. So it's, it's, it's pretty ironic. Everything comes in moderation. Uh, you need to have balance in everything because either or extremes in the other, space, especially dealing with opinions, you will turn them right around and become the thing that you hate, basically. There needs to be balance with this, people. There has to be balance with this because you're stopping creativity. You're making this almost a fascist industry because you're stopping creation. You're stopping the broadening of minds because you don't, um, because you want your vision to be seen and you, if anybody goes outside of that, you bully them. No matter what your vision is, in, uh, for you to force your vision on somebody else, you're bullying. That's what it is. So I think this whole thing needs to stop. I think what everybody needs to come to is to a common ground and say, you know what? Everybody has a right to create anything they want. If it's not hurting anybody, you may not agree with it, but if it's not hurting anybody or breaking any laws, let people just create their own thing and it'll work, it, work out itself. There will be an audience for whatever. Stop dictating and policing other people's creativity. That needs to stop. Also, we need to stop this nitpicking and picking at people's past and digging up people's past to find out what they've done, unless it's extreme or something like that. But if it's like something small they said, or, or even if it's racist in the past, but they, shown themselves to change don't make a movement against this one person because that's bullying you know maybe expose it or whatever or something like that but don't make a movement and target people unless it's well deserved like something like sebastian stan no that's not what i, I so if i wear an asian outfit or if I wear an Asian, a shirt with an Asian logo on it, you're gonna cancel me? Like, I buy Uniqlo, so I can't buy clothes from Uniqlo? Like, I, I don't understand. I mean, you know, his girlfriend was not doing blackface. His girlfriend was doing something that was an honor and respecting the Asian culture from what I'm seeing. It was a beautiful outfit. It was a be it, it's, I don't understand what the issue was with that. I don't think it was what, so I, now I can't eat Asian food because I'm not Asian. So, uh, and what else with the whole acting thing? So now with um, Juan Carlo Esposito, he can't be a character, which he's an actor because the character's Hispanic. So, okay, so let's say, so a gay person can't play a straight character. You wanna go there? So what is actually, you're making, instead of trying to 
have equality and and fairness to all races, you're actually segregating the races <laughs> if you do that. Um, it's actually, you're causing segregation. I don't think you want to promote that. So it, it, it's a kind of a fine line. Like if you're an actor and, and this actor is good at the role, no matter what race or whatever he is, that's up to the director to decide that. I mean, unless it's like, you know, like they said back in the past, they were going to cast Julie Roberts as Harriet Tubman. Now that's very extreme or something like that. Maybe people see it as that, but I don't think it's that extreme. Then you're going into spaces where you actually don't include diversity. A straight art actor can't play gay because they're not gay. So a gay actor can't play a straight character because they're gay. So that's where you're going with this. And there are a lot more straight roles than gay. You know what I'm saying? As far as the leading character. So you're going to have prejudice in the world of acting. So <laughs> acting is what it is. Acting, you're acting as the character. You're, you should not be the character but you should be acting the character. So if you play a superhero, you need to cast the person with the power, the exact powers that <laughs> the person has, like as, as if anyone has powers. So it's just, it's called acting. So when we go into that realm, you need to be open-minded because that could be a dangerous game you play. And um, and it could debilitate you instead of moving forward. I know there's issues with the Whisper Network. And the Whisper Network, from what I understand, is a group of people that get together and make an agenda to cancel people they don't like or like what they did and actually try to destroy their careers with this toxic cancel culture. And I really don't agree with it. And it's really not cool. And, um, and it's, it's more insidious than noble. And uh, we need to watch for those extremes and we need to cancel those groups that do that. So, if you like what you're hearing, like, share, subscribe. Be careful out there, be healthy, and take care.